Today I'm working on a Cool Air Ice Machine KYT0500A. This machine uh, is brand new, just got installed about a month ago, back in March, uh, but it randomly stopped making ice. Wanted to show you real quick what I'm finding. Maybe this will help you out in the future um, if you run into a similar issue. So I, as you can see, I have my refrigerant gauges attached to the machine. All the other components are working as they should. The fan kicks on, the water, water pump, compressor, everything runs, but I don't have any heat at my condenser. I don't have any cooling at my evaporator. And I'm gonna show you what my pressures look like when I turn the machine on and I let it make ice. When the compressor starts up, you'll see my pressures start to change. So a couple seconds, there's a compressor started. My suction pressure is going to start pulling down. My high side pressure is gonna go up. My suction pressure is gonna eventually drop into a vacuum, but my high side pressure is gonna go up to 350 and then it's gonna level off somewhere close to 325. Now, if this machine was low on charge, yes, my suction side would go into a vacuum, but if it was low on charge, my high side wouldn't be up at 325. It would be down quite a bit lower. Possibly even my, my suction side wouldn't be in a vacuum. But with this being in a vacuum and this being relatively high, plus when the machine's off, the pressures equalize, I believe, and I've confirmed this with Manitowoc tech support, I believe this is my issue. Now inside here, is what's called a TXV. And I'll try to open this up a little bit so you can see it. That's what it looks like, right? Now this guy's job is to allow refrigerant to flow through at a metered rate, but for whatever reason, it's not working. And I don't know if you can see, but it is kind of frosting up right here at the outlet, which is telling me that refrigerant is trying to flow through but it can't. Now inside here is the TXV bowl. You wanna make sure this is mounted correctly, which it is. Maybe it's a little high, maybe it should be a little bit more horizontal, but for right now, it looks really good. Now I've heard people say that you can take this, this bulb off and you could put it into a glass of warm water, put it into a glass of ice water, put it into a glass of warm water, and kind of do that back and forth. And what will happen is this thing will open and close and open and close. So I'm gonna try that real quick and see what happens. Got my ice water, got my warmish slash hot water. Pressures are the same. Been running for about two minutes. So we're gonna ice it, wait, Maybe 20, 30 seconds. What that does is it closes down the TXV. Now we're gonna warm it up. It's probably not 20 to 30 seconds, but we'll try a couple different time frames. I'm gonna do this a couple different times, and then after I can figure out if it worked or not, I will uh, show you the results. Did it a couple times, no change in my pressures. This guy continues to frost up, <clears throat> but I have no ice formation on my evaporator. Let me pull this off real quick. After 16 or so minutes, there's no ice formation nothing forms at all so i'm thinking bad txv and we're gonna order it and swap it out uh unfortunately uh was well, actually fortunately this will be pretty easy to do but this guy is gonna be difficult to do that filter dryer right there is gonna be difficult to get to probably going to end up pulling this whole thing out to get to it. So just got done diagnosing that cool air ice machine that wasn't making ice. 
the issue turned out to be a bad TV. I went through all the checks that I could check with the exception of possibly adding a little bit of refrigerant, which I guess I could have. Sometimes when the machine's low on charge, it'll give you some similar uh, symptoms with the low side being low, but usually if it's a low on charge issue, you wouldn't be in a vacuum necessarily on the suction side with your high side being as high as it was. You may be in a vacuum with your high side if it was you know closer to 100 PSI. I could see that maybe 200 PSI, but going all the way up to 350 and then leveling out closer to 325, not likely that it's low on charge. Uh, I did talk to Manitowoc Tech Support just to verify the findings. And when I spoke to the gentleman, he didn't recommend adding charge to see if it was low on charge simply because the high side was so high. Also, low on charge, you would get a lot more heat at the condenser because it's a smaller amount of refrigerant picking up all of the heat instead of a full charge picking it up. It would just be hotter than normal. Uh, there was zero heat, zero cooling, tiny bit of frost at that TXV. I did try, and I don't, I've not seen anybody like officially show me this or you know, tell me that it's a true diagnostic tool. I've read it somewhere. I think somebody may, may have mentioned it once, decided to try it out. The Put the TXV bulb in warm water, put it in ice water, and kind of uh, move it back and forth. And what that will do is get that little pin inside the TXV to uh, try to open, try to close, try to open, try to close. That way, if there's any debris blocking that hole, it might you know, help push it out of the way. In this case, it didn't work. So, uh, final recommendation from Manitowoc was to replace the TXV, the filter dryer, and that will s solve the issue. Uh, don't know if I'll be able to re record that process. Depends on what time I get here. It, it was a Mongolian barbecue uh, spot. So, they'll get pretty busy and uh, it'll be a little hard to record that process if you're interested in more ice machine service repair videos check out the youtube channel ice machine 411 there's a lot of different uh, brands uh, makes models of ice so there's manitowoc cool air isomatic hashizaki scotsman Istro, and uh some other machines here and there. <clears throat> you can contact me directly, icemachine411 at gmail.com. There's also a, uh, well, what do you call it? It's kind of like a forum or a group chat on Patreon. It's completely free. A uh, bunch of different people, uh, owners of equipments and technicians alike who are on that group chat. You know, if you want to crowdsource your diagnostic procedure, you can just message the group chat, say, hey, I have this machine. You can upload pictures. We can all kind of chime in and, and help you figure out what's going on. Until next time, I appreciate y'all watching to the end, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.